I'm again a call from Andy Cruz. Full Patrol. Yeah, that's right. It is the return of the Mole Patrol here on Rob Has a Podcast. The Mole is back, and so are we. Hello, everybody. I am Josh Wiggler here with the return of your favorite podcast about the Mole, at least on RHAP, the Mole Patrol. I am joined here, of course, as always, there, by... there are other mole podcasts. Listen, well, you're not supposed to talk yet. First all of right. all, go back underground, <laughs> go play in the dirt with the rest of the, the mole people. You come back later. First, we introduce Jessica Lee. Jess, hi. Hi, Josh. The light is so bright. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't deal with how bright this light is. It's like I've been underground for months and months, <laughs> and now I am. I am coming up to the surface to talk about the mole again, except I was promised Andy Coops and there is no Andy Coops. Were you in captivity? Like, where? what were you doing underground? Well, that's what we do when we're not talking about the mole. We're underground like moles. Oh, I guess that's right. Uh, I've been doing this wrong. I've been out and about just living my life here How not dare talking you. about the mole. Uh, of course, we are joined, as always, here on the Mole Patrol podcast by the legend themselves, Brooklyn Zed. Hello. Yeah, we were underground. All the colors changed. Some genders changed. Mm-hmm. The host is different. A lot of things are different. Uh, but fundamentally, we are back to talk yes. about the mole. Uh, we said we wouldn't do it again. Um, but you should know by now, Josh Wickler says he's not going to do a thing and then he'll do it. Uh, so here we are, the return of the mole. And we're very excited about this because The Mole is on Netflix, uh, a new iteration of this show that Jess, Zed, and myself, we talked about the first two seasons of The Mole, the Anderson Cooper era. We thought we were done with season two, but Netflix trotted out the new edition of the show, the first five episodes currently available on Netflix, and they're going to be released in batches over the course of the month. So we are going to be covering them in a limited edition capacity here and i think it's going to be like a four week event for us and so it only makes sense that this is a four-headed panel here as the mole patrol much like the mole itself evolves with the inclusion of the guy who spoke earlier who was going to be a surprise but it's really not a surprise it's his podcast obviously you're going to hear from rob sesterdino oh. yes. <laughs> Let's go, Netflix. Yes. Oh, my God, Rob. I'm I'm so thrilled to have a second weekly podcast with you right now. In addition to our mm-hmm. House of the Dragon coverage, yeah. I am even more excited to have some backup here on the stupid team uh, <laughs> when yes. compared to Jess and Zed. Yes. I needed some help here. Yes. Team uh, under uh, team down low. Is that where mm-hmm. we are? Oh, yeah. yeah. IQ yeah. down low. Uh, mm-hmm. So great to have Rob here as part of the, the mole patrol. And Rob, I think really this is your fault. You were like the mole's coming back. Uh, we got to do something about this. Uh, oh, we have to. Well, I mean that uh, you all were so precious to you know uh what like 18 months before the mole was going to return to netflix did you know did you have a clue were you tapped in was one of us the mole zed were one of us yeah. uh, is someone uh, is one of us secretly a netflix employee that has been yeah, inserted into the podcast me. universe mm-hmm. uh, i would oh. not be especially welcome as a netflix employee mm-hmm. but i feel like the rumors of of netflix doing a reboot of the mole has been around for ages and i just can't believe it finally is here yeah, I would prefer to think that we caused this. Oh, uh-huh. like there was enough buzz around our podcast that Netflix Maybe. took a step back and said, we need to bring this show back. Yeah. Yeah. We were the ones who were taking the uh, the Pelican briefcase known as the mole out in the middle of the night to podcast about it for a little while. And now we are returning it with double the value here for the mole patrol netflix edition did i do any of that right i think that's completely right you're insinuating that having rob sesternino on our podcast doubles its value at least least. (laughs) yeah having rob on our podcast on the mole patrol it's worth a thousand eyes (laughs) and we made more mole exist where there was not mole before Yeah. yeah yeah But Um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Thank you all for uh, taking me on this journey with you that, of course, I I was an OG uh, mole person uh, way back when, uh, back the the first time through. 
I have not gone back to the mall uh, mm -hmm. like you all have, uh, but I am very excited to talk about this uh, new Netflix version, episode one. Yeah, uh, and just to specify, I still haven't watched anything other than the first two seasons of The Mole. If you ever, ever, ever want to hear coverage of The Mole seasons three or four, do not at me about them. Uh, tell me nothing. I am unspoiled somehow. I still don't know. I have suspicions based on some things I feel like I remember, but I don't know for sure. We have no plans to do those seasons of the show, but we also didn't really think we'd be coming back for the Netflix version, and here we are. So everybody be cool out there. Uh, everyone be be relaxed. Now, um, usually when a mole returns, that's bad news, right? Uh, like typically you don't want the mole to come back. Uh, but here, this is good news. The mole has returned. Uh, and we're excited about this, Zed, I think. It's it's like the groundhog came up and we have six more weeks of mole coverage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ish. Like four. Something like yeah. that. Four. <laughs> Are moles and groundhogs similar? I think so. They live in the ground. They live yeah. in the ground. Mm -hmm. They're animals. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're both animals. Uh, so the mole is back. It's going to be, do we know exactly how long this is going to be? We know it's going to be a three-week event on Netflix. This is our sort of week zero, uh, our week one. We we're just talking about the first episode. I'm sure, Rob, yeah. how many people do you think watched the first zero. episode and then stopped and listened zero. to the podcast? Um, you know, so uh, that we we plan to record uh, after the first episode. We we stuck to our guns uh, to go ahead and record after that first episode. But yeah, no, I, I don't think any person... Uh, didn't go ahead and watch. We did not. Was so we can guess, and you can see if we're right or not. I think we should guess who the mole is. Yeah. But I think that we could just talk about overall vibes of like the mole is back, and we will be back with a full recap of week one coming up on Monday night. So this is just our check in. We're here, and then uh, we'll be back on Monday night to talk about the end of week one of the mole. Yes, and then uh, the following Monday, we'll talk week two, and the Monday after that, we will talk about the end of The Mole on Netflix season one, which comes our way, Jess, sadly not from Anderson Cooper. No Andy Coops uh, to be found here in the Netflix edition of The Mole. It's Alex Wagner who is hosting the show this time around. This is my first time dealing with a season of The Mole without Anderson Cooper. Weird for me. I suspect slightly less weird for uh, Rob, Jess, and Zed, who I assume you've all seen uh, coopless seasons of The Mole. Mm hmm Yes. Yeah. 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 It's true. They're not as good, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, Alex all... Wagner is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, my husband is a big MSNBC watcher, and so I'm familiar with Alex Wagner a bit. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to be a serviceable host she's just like you know she's not the og i liked her she had a, a uh she had like a martini uh in like the super mm -hmm. villain layer i was like oh this is fun this is kind of like this is cheeky you it's know? like anderson eating the baguette yeah a little you, bit you want your mole shows to have uh hosts that uh engage with some sort of consumable i think uh, i think like you want to see them like swirling a glass or holding an apple or something like that so uh off to it and ideally i think you want them uh rob to be journalism adjacent at least, if not all the way. Sure. Uh, I mean, Ahmad Rashad uh, was uh, a sports journalist, like uh, yeah. covered like, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, sports stories. So, yeah, I think so. I, I think that for uh, for Alex, well, I want to say Alex Gardner. Uh, Alex. Yeah. Uh, Alex uh, yeah. Uh, for Alex Wagner, I mean, I think it's like a, like if you want to be in the cable news game. I mean, I think that this is good to be like following in the footsteps of uh, Andy Copes. Like, yeah. I think that that's a good good role model or a mole model. Do you think Zed by the end of this season, Alex Wagner will become uh, silver haired? Uh, will we see a silver haired Alex Wagner by the end of the mole on Netflix season? one? I think it's already too late. Uh huh. Anderson Cooper was already silver haired when the yeah. season started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to commit right off the bat. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. I think maybe I'd be more in Jess if there was, if, if she had the silver hair to begin with. Yeah, well, that comes from catching malaria in your 20s. Oh, okay. Well, 
Okay, well, let's I don't avoid want that. that for her. <laughs> no, I don't want that for any of you, anyone out there. Uh, so we're going to talk about for the first episode. We're using this basically as like, I guess this is kind of like preview material, huh, sure. Rob? Because like we have to figure out who all of these people are. We have to figure out who's the mole. We don't even know who's going home first because we've stopped at this very awkward time. Um, should we have seen this coming? This is how Netflix likes to do their reality. Yeah, TV. yeah. Yeah, they like to give you like the the cliffhanger because they know that they've got the next episode option available, and we just extraordinary willpower, I would have to say, from the four of us to not hit next. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's all like part of like the Netflix calculus of like, okay, well, we know if somebody starts the second episode, they're probably going to keep it on. They're not going to turn it off after they find the uh, elimination. So if you just got one and done, okay, you'd probably like, okay, let me turn it off. Let me do something else. That's how they get. That's how they get you every time, <laughs> every mm -hmm. last time. Just when uh, you think you're out, they pull you back in. It's mm -hmm. like the mobile patrol motto at this point in mm -hmm. time. Um, so how do we want to do this? You guys want to crawl through the episode? We'll meet the contestants that way. Let's do a straight recap of episode one and then maybe make some predictions throughout by the end of things. This is just a little bit of a, hey, how are you? We're yeah. doing it. I like that. Can we also just maybe up top just talk about like uh, what? How do we feel? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I'm certainly not thrilled with the fact that there are no old authority figures. Uh, I'm a big fan of give me a a, a Charlie or give me a Bill, uh, some sort of old man serial killer who may secretly be the mole. Uh, there's like no one really to impersonate in that regard. It's just a bunch of young hotties. Uh, we could like get a little bit more of an age range here, I think, mm -hmm. but it's just like, this is going to be like, this is going to be the cast of the mole that is like likeliest to sleep with each other. And <laughs> you, I don't know you think that maybe the same people that cast too hot to handle also cast the mole. Yeah. They were very, you know, I think that well, that's these, the, are the, these are the pictures we have. So. <laughs> Zed, am I wrong? This feels like this is the direction they went in. Maybe it was like even like all of like the two hot to handle B-sides made it onto the mole. The ones that were like slightly more intellectual. And yeah. therefore they were like, uh, okay, that one step up. We're going to go put you in Tony Stark's house. Yeah. yeah. Not, not hot enough that we can't handle them. <laughs> yeah yeah just hot enough to handle hot, hot yeah. enough to handle yeah yeah <laughs> that could have been another name <laughs> for them all mm -hmm. uh, if they weren't able to get the rights hot enough to handle wouldn't be bad so i liked it uh i need to see more obviously uh great uh great friends of the podcast uh mike bloom and dalton ross both had tweets earlier this week if you saw them that the first episode of the mole they're like it's okay uh first one's all right but stick with it it gets real good. Um, so we'll stick with it and yeah. hopefully it'll get real good. But I thought it was, you know, it was fine. It was nice well, to be back in the format of the show. I, I really expected to be disappointed after I heard what Dalton and Mike said about the first episode. But I, I came away. I thought I was pretty pumped up. Yeah. I, I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Zed? I think the most disorienting thing is how modern it feels because mm -hmm. it is so locked into that, like, early 2000s taking itself super seriously executions are happening uh state of things and this was like yeah you're all gonna hang out in the jungle for a night and then we'll put you in this house and someone's gonna get eliminated yeah. with our little cell phones uh <laughs> you're typing into a computer anyway just give us the screen mm -hmm. just give us the screen you guys Jess, did you miss any like sort of like the spy craft flourishes of the early days of the mole? There's none of the like, <laughs> like none of like, <laughs> that's <"Bah>, good. <laughs> you know, we didn't get like any of that vibe. It was yeah. really like, yeah, this is like sexy Mission Impossible. <laughs> you know, like if see if the seasons one and two were like the '60s Mission Impossible. This is like Tom Cruise trying like to like publicly trying to end his own life via stunt work uh, version of the mole. Um, I don't know. It was, it was a little whiplashy for me. I was going to say it's like the difference between Sean Connery Bond and Daniel Craig Bond. Mm -hmm. Like there's no cheese in this. And I also starting them in the jungle was an interesting choice, too, because I think they're trying to play on the survivor parts of us oh, rather yeah. than any for kind sure. of 
See, I thought, Rob, uh, that they were like, okay, so we've heard the Mole Patrol podcast. And we actually did pay attention to the podcast when Josh, Zed, and Jess said that they weren't going to go past season two. And we didn't tweet them wondering where the season three podcast was because we did active listening and heard their words (laughs) when they (laughs) routinely said that they were done. But we want to get them back in action. And the way to do that is to start with a set piece that is just ripped straight out of lost like yeah let's just let's crash a plane in the middle of a jungle and get wiggler back at least yeah felt like this was calling mm-hmm. to me it was definitely just for you yeah. although a, a plane crash in the middle of australia also has some mad max beyond Sweet. thunderdome vibes to it's it. it's almost no it's like if oceanic 815 rob didn't leave sydney and it just crashed in australia didn't even mm-hmm. make it to the island we don't know that they yeah. weren't in australia mm-hmm Maybe they got some leftovers uh, uh-huh. season three in there for yeah. you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Where's old man Garvey? See, uh-huh. Kevin Sr. I need Kevin Sr. <laughs> in the cast. He would have been mole. the good mole. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm, I could be the mole, I guess. You know, where's an old? I need an old. I need one old. Yeah. Need an old. Who's the oldest person on the cast? I don't know. Uh, anyway, so we begin in the Daintree Rainforest. Um, and Alex Wagner, the host of the show, is telling us that the mole is all about uh, somebody who is here to disrupt, divide, and deceive. Uh, the three Ds. Uh, I thought that the three Ds were diners, drive-ins, and dives. <laughs> and I thought the three Ds were destination, determination, deliberation. Uh-huh. But we got them wrong, I guess, Ed. We failed that quiz. No quizzes this time, folks. Sorry. We all have stuff to do. Uh, I, got, so- I, I got demoted, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just lost her job. <laughs> Why am I here? Why am I even here? <laughs> just we we have to leave lines, early so to do an interview. Job. Like, Jess is just, you know, phoning it in. Uh, yeah. The, well, the bring back Andy Coops, and maybe I'll have a better role. Fair enough. Fair enough. So the first thing that we see here is, yeah, everybody has to go off and find a plane that is deep in the jungle. Rob, did you feel like they were just like gonna have them live in the jungle for the season of the no, show? No, I, I did. I actually found that jarring. Where yes. I feel like that, like uh, the survivalism was never a part of the original mall. So no. I did think that this was kind of wild because uh, I had so many questions from like you know all these years of watching Survivor. I'm like, well, what are they? Where are they going to the? Like, uh, I guess we found out they weren't going to the bathroom. Uh, but like, what are they eating? <laughs> what, what? Like, what if it was raining? Like, yeah. what? If, it just seemed like uh, I had many questions about uh, everything going on. Zed, it's the show, as originally pitched, was about living in the lap of luxury, the maraschino yeah. cherries of it all. That's uh, right. So Anderson's when, Mountain Hut. So when we're when we're busting out machetes and such, mm-hmm. uh, this is a strange vibe for me to begin with. Yeah, um, maybe they misheard. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, the original show, they're in all these beautiful hotels eating these lavish meals with Anderson. If they're staying up all night, it's in like, you know, a creepy fortress where they used to hang people or something. They're not like out in the jungle pitching a tent. No, no. Uh, Some tents pitched in this episode for sure. No doubt about it. Okay. Uh, They were out there. They were doing it. Yep. Yeah. Hot enough to handle. Yes. Uh, all right. So we get to meet everybody. The first three that we meet uh, are Casey. She is uh, a COVID nurse. Uh, we meet Kasi, I believe is how it is pronounced. I believe it is spelled K-E-S-I. She is a systems analyst. Uh, and then there is Jacob, uh, the small town Ohio firefighter, Zed, uh, from Northwest Ohio. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, where are you from, Northwest? Uh, I don't yeah, know what is part this, of Ohio. The Northwest is this okay. going to be a? Is this going to be an important detail later on, Rob? We're going to find out where Jacob is secretly from. He's from Mole, Ohio. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, uh, let's see. Um, North by Northwest is an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Yeah, maybe something there. Uh, but I wonder if maybe he's just like sort of like his emergent gameplay is I won't tell people any details. So then like if there's a question on the quiz, like, well, uh, where is the mole from? Yes. Then nobody will be able to get it right. Yeah, that's a good one. Keep that close to the vest. Uh, we see three people are the first ones to arrive at the plane. Uh, I believe, is it Ose is the mm-hmm. is the real estate Brooklyn? I'm used to the concrete jungle, the not Brooklyn the real jungle. Who made us look so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brooklyn Ose. 
Yeah, Never Brooklyn been happier to live in, in Manhattan, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. This is a tough look for Brooklyn, you think, Zed? Yeah. 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 Standing around with a leaf over his head, <laughs> not yeah. going to the bathroom for days. Uh huh. I I really wished I didn't have that information from him later in the episode. <laughs> it really uh, recolored the entire <laughs> helicopter ride, and I don't want to talk about what color that was. Yeah. I think uh-huh. he also said there might be dinosaurs. Yes. Yeah. Well, he was so Jurassic good in confessional situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good. Oh, I mean, I think that there were a lot of really good narrators in this episode. I have yes. to say, uh, yes. there is Joy. She is a, a commercial pilot. She says that fewer than one percent of pilots in the United States are black women, and she is one of them. She seemed cool. I feel terrified that she is about to go home as soon yeah. as we hit play <laughs> next. But and I uh, think she is the oldest member of the cast at forty. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And can I add also, if she doesn't go home, I think she also might be the mole. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where I'm at. I've got mole yeah. candidates and they're either going to, the first thing we're going to find out is which one of them is actually the mole because mm-hmm. I think it's it's down to Osei or Joy. Okay. Me, uh, already. Wow. Already. already yeah. have got it locked on two. I've got, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting my shot right now. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's Joy. And then the third to the plane is Avery, uh, professional gamer. Avery. Okay. Uh, Zed, have you on your uh, Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash hard rock hope, where you Twitch stream Japanese role playing games and other video games? Have you crossed paths with <laughs> Avery yet? A V O R I. No, yes. I have not. <laughs> we talked about out. how many people in this cast have names that end in I. Mm-hmm. I, I noted some interesting spellings mm-hmm. that I thought, mm-hmm. Rob, you were going to love after uh, talking George about the spellings. George R. Martin. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Carl with a Q. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't see, yeah. I didn't see anybody that was uh, that. Uh, what, what, Zed, what do you think is the weirdest one? A- Avery, A V O R I, is a pretty yeah. weird one to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Avery, uh, yeah. a professional gamer, amateur climber. Another thing you've got in common with them, Zed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely would have been on team up high. I have oh, no yeah. problem with heights. I've uh-huh. practiced with climbing. I'm familiar yeah. with the yeah. belay equipment. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, then you get up there and there's a, apparently an undoable knot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> requires help. Yeah. Once upon a time, I really would have been on team up high, but uh, I don't know where I would have been <laughs> on this one here. Uh, we are going to see uh, Pranav, I think, is the mm-hmm. law student. Uh and he has an interesting confessional jest where he's talking about, like, I'm pretty sure that I can make people think I'm the mole. Uh, like, I think that I can lure people into thinking I'm the mole. I feel like that confessional almost rules him out to me, right? Like, that's a strange thing to tell us and, like, for Netflix specifically to tell us as our first impression of this guy. It depends on which level of galaxy brain you want to be at, because I think there's a case to be made for he's saying this to fake us all out. Mm-hmm. But the bluff. I, yeah. yeah. I do feel like I want everybody to think I'm the mole so that they won't figure out who the real mole is. That's like step one galaxy brain. Yeah. Like okay. that's like the little tiny beams of light. It's not mm-hmm. the full, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Our brains have not like leaked out into light to cascade right. across the universe quite yet. Right. Uh, but we're working our way towards that for we'll sure. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, a few other people are arriving. Everybody's converging on the plane at this point. I think this is where we get the warehouse worker Dom. Uh, who's I he's feel, my favorite. I, I feel so bad for these him. people having to play with me. I'm working on an impression. I don't think I got one for him yet. Uh, but he's the one who's going to have like the serious crush on William. I think who is Thor straight up. Uh, yeah, uh, Thor, or as I had him in my notes, Targaryen Max Dawson. Targaryen Max Dawson. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think in his confessionals, and I didn't see it anywhere else, but only straight on in his confessionals, he looks kind of like Tyson. Mm, yeah. He loses me with the Thor energy the moment he says, yeah, I'm a brand manager. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just here to make as much money as possible. It's like, whoa, you're saying things that I definitely did not guess about you. Mm-hmm. I thought you were just going to be about this beverage is good. Another, uh, you know, that's all I thought was going to come from Thor here, but William's got thoughts. Uh, thoughts. I don't know. I tried. <laughs> don't just say thoughts. I'm anymore. rusty here. Okay. <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time talking about dragons and such. I don't know what's happening with moles. Yeah. 
Uh, as far as William goes, William uh, seemed to get maybe the most screen time out of anybody in the whole show. And how how are we feeling? And that after this episode, are, are we ruling William out as a, a potential mole candidate, or is that what they want us to do? Hmm. Hmm. Jess, what do you think? Because I'm curious about the level of mole to production involvement interaction because there's a ton of it in the original series i wonder if there is in this case as well i mean it is a little sus that he got to step away from camp for a little while but i also feel like they just gave him the hero role Mm -hmm. where he could you know he could easily you know step away and i think the mole would probably not take that bait like they'd open the clue and be like yeah i'm not gonna do this yeah um, I don't know. I feel like uh, if if he is the mole and they saddled him with this big mole energy in the very first episode, Rob, I feel like I am questioning the mole production here. I feel like mm-hmm. that's a bold choice as you are resurrecting yeah. this long since gone, at least in the United States, reality TV show. That's a bold swing to like uh, put your actual mole in this first position. I just wonder if you come away from this episode and be like, okay, well, it's obviously it can't be Will because mm-hmm. he would have thrown that first challenge that he got individually if he was the mole. So it clearly can't be Will. Mm. God, yeah. I have a question. Do we think that this iteration of the mole is going to throw in a whole bunch of tiny Baroque clues tiny like the early Baroque ones did? Clues. Yes, I think <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, are, are we going to be, are, are there going to be points where we can go back and like freeze frame it and it'll like spell out Will is the mole in tiny letters in the background? <laughs> yeah. Yes. On the bricks in one confessional. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, can I throw one out there that I think we might be getting here really quickly mm-hmm. is we meet marketing consultant Greg. Uh, who uh, who is loving being out here, has a lot of mustache twirling villain energy to me, and apparently is just like ringing a triangle here <laughs> in the jungle. Uh, great choice of instrument, underrated the triangle. Uh, I think that we should be very sus of Greg if in a future episode, Rob, they give us the mole logo, but the O is a triangle. So let's just keep an eye out for like on Ozark imagery. Yes, <laughs> yes. Also on Netflix. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Easy cross marketing, and that could have been something that Greg consulted on. Yes. Well, I, I really liked Greg as a narrator. I thought he was really fun, especially when that he was talking about like what it meant the people that went on each of the three missions, uh, the people that went up high, the people that went down low, and the people that went to the water, and what yes. it meant. And so I, I think that uh, he is, is just a, a really fun presence to have on the show. Yes. Uh, I like him a lot so far. Um, Alex Wagner shows up. She's like, hey, what's up? So this is the mole. You're on a show. And this is the premise. And uh, yeah, one of you is secretly the mole. And it seems like like a surprise to everybody was sort of how I read that. Uh, Zed, did I get that right? It seemed like everyone was like, wait, what? One of well, us I mean, there's is working always against some- the rest? <laughs> There's some artificiality in these intros on what? all shows, right? You know, Jeff pretends not to know the name of anybody on the mat at the start of Survivor, and then they do a challenge, and he immediately knows everybody's name. Yeah, but that's uh, Jeff is doing the acting here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like the whole cast. Rob was like, "Wait, what?" So, if, if this, anybody, had, <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> uh, if anybody's ever heard like uh, the uh, my any recaps of Too Hot to Handle, like they're always like, "Wait, what? We're on Too Hot to Handle? Wait, mm-hmm. what?" Uh, mm-hmm. So, I think that might be part of the Netflix uh, reality plan. Okay, it's people like act t- like they don't know what show. They're so, on. Yeah. are you saying that like everybody that gets cast for a Netflix show from here on out, they're not going to tell them what show they're on, and everybody's just going to assume they're on Too Hot to Handle <laughs> until they get there, and it's yeah. like, no, you guys are doing the mole. Yeah, yeah. maybe you just will be dropped in a jungle, and then like on the first day, you'll find out what show you're doing. It's they don't even more. tell you where you're going. It's like, oh, am I on the beach? I must be on Too Hot to Handle. Am I in the mm. jungle? Oh, mm-hmm. I'm on the mole. Oh, am I in a random apartment building in England? I must be on the circle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, I think uh, you wake up to your circumstances and you have something of an idea of which show you are on. Uh, so we have our first mission. Uh, our first task of the season is uh, this this idea of there's three pieces of cargo scattered throughout the jungle. One is above ground. One is below. One is in the water. And you need to split into teams to find these things. Now, Rob, one of my favorite things as I discovered the mole alongside Jess and Zed once upon a time is when Andy Coops, Anderson Cooper, would like throw some superlatives out at them. He's like, I need you to identify three of you that are really smart and three of you that are dumb as shit. And then like the dumb as shit people would like not actually be doing stupid things. It's like you've been underestimated by the rest of the group and now you're going to have so much power in this next operation. Uh, mm -hmm. And I felt like this was not that. Uh, I would have liked there to be like a little more cheekiness with the way that people are divided up yeah i mean um again i i have not watched the old mole in uh 20 years so i, I bet it, it, yeah yeah i bet uh, i mean i listened to some of the podcasts but i yeah. i don't remember uh that being a big part of it so that'll be a fun thing to look out for if they ever end up doing it yeah uh, i think that would have been fun so let's see what sort of strange superlatives they throw out at people but what would right everybody now, have been what would it, that just uh, or zed, zed would have been up high up high yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think i would have probably been down low down low <laughs> yeah i think it would yeah. have been down low do uh, not want to get wet no <laughs> yeah I'd, I'd end up doing the, the h2o diamond. and that yeah. means yeah you're in the yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm taking mm -hmm. i'm taking one for the team here you're a team yeah. player yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely like to hide in the dirt. Uh, uh -huh. It is my move here. I'm not a high achiever, and I don't know if I'm a team player. I think I'm trying to just like uh, move as far away from the action as possible. Uh, so I would have been amongst the quartet of the down lowers who just free wheeled around doing jack all uh absolutely nothing uh for the next little while so we do go off on these uh these three little sub missions these side quests we've got uh dom william avery and Cassie are the up high they are the high achievers according to greg uh the down low the ones that hide in the dirt uh samara and sandy who i don't remember them having an introductory scene i didn't jump yeah. down they they kind of didn't uh get too much to do here in the first episode kind of a purple edit for them uh did did i miss something zed or did you not I get much on so. them either yeah okay. they each had a couple of confessionals but if you showed me pictures of both of them i'm not sure i, could I have tell no you idea which was which. Did, did i get it sandy or sammy sandy, sandy. there's sandy. a samara and there's sandy does okay. samara go by sammy Ooh, well, that's going to be really confusing if so. Uh, mm -hmm. So Samara, Sandy, uh, Ose, and Joy, they are going to be the down low squad. And then Jacob, Greg, Casey, and Pranav are going to go in the water. Uh, those are the team players. Uh, Jess, do you agree that that is how we would categorize these divisions? Uh, that we would, uh, that that Greg's classification of like the people in the water are the ones who are the team players, or if Greg is the one who's analyzing these three groups in this way, is he not acting kind of, you know, like strategically moly, you know, sort of like, well, I'll hide amongst the team players. I mean, there's always that one overthinker on the cast. He's like the season one gym of yes. the group where I think he, that could be moly behavior or it could be he's that guy behavior mm -hmm. yeah uh it felt it felt a little jimmy to me uh slipping jimmy for sure um so we could take the stories by uh one by one by one the up high group they uh they take a, a wrong turn initially uh and then i think is it william who gets the map and leads them in the, the right direction they're like wow look at you viking bro so mm -hmm. it's like, well, I got to carry the bag and do the map. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's this clue that all three of them are going to have in their bags that they have to sacrifice $2,500 in order to open. Uh, William tells us, Rob, this is not an option. We're not opening this clue. William does not know defeat. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. William will, will not be turned away. No. Um, so they find the, uh, there's this cargo net that has all sorts of stuff tangled up in it. Uh, Zed, Avery, expert climber, uh, knows mm -hmm. exactly what to do uh, and is able to get up there very quickly. But unfortunately, all of these knots are tied up uh, and she is able to get an assist from, I forget who, who goes up there. Is it Kasi goes up yeah, there? Yeah, Kasi goes with her. up there too. Uh, and then there seems to be like some sort of like, oh, I don't know. 
there's a lot of knots up there. That's true. That's pretty sus. I was like, I'm not entirely sure I understand what they're suspicious. That's of one moment. of the things that I dislike about them all. Is yes. that like people are always like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Are you telling me now that this person is the mall? Like that this woman just climbed yeah. up. She rappelled a hundred feet up in the air to go swing back and forth to grab the briefcase. And she's saying there's knots in it. That doesn't she that that this is good evidence. Like, why would she do that if she was the mall? Yeah. Like Zed, what what did Stephanie Lagrosa do when she was a mole? She uh, like, disappeared. Oh, I can't climb. <laughs> yeah, she can't get it. Oh, the rope's not working, guys. I'm yeah. stuck. I'm stuck. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah. Isn't the answer is she got caught? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Got caught in a net. Uh, so they're able to get it down. No clue required. Cut to the underwater team with Jessica Lee's, uh as Jess. Uh, they have to open the clue eventually because they burn a half hour just swimming around like uh, little hippopotamuses. Uh, and they, the clue is like, yeah, so there's a machete or, or a crowbar in the crate. And they're like, what crate? <laughs> These fools. We haven't gotten there yet. Jess, how do they not see the crate? It was across, like it was a direct, like two second swim across this little body of water. And it was bright red. Bright red. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. They did the candy figure it apple out. red, fire yeah. truck red. What are you doing? They, they figured it out, but mm. I I think it's pretty funny that the clue like inadvertently trolled them yeah. because <laughs> they think they're getting a hint to find the crate, a and location. it's like it's like we figure you already have the crate because you're not idiots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that like it, so. There's a crate over there, and that's where the crowbar is. Rob, like, just what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we think they would have figured it's out like where in Westworld when Bernard is looking right at a door, mm -hmm. uh, but he can't see a door because he's a robot? And so here it's like, are you guys? Can you not see the crate? It's right in front of you. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I can't see the uh, crate. Can't see it. Um. So then they get a crowbar. Do they get to keep the crowbar? Is that like, does the crowbar stay with them for the journey? I don't think this is like one of these Final Fantasy situations where every item you pick up <laughs> is in your inventory for the rest of the game. Should be. Should be. Mm -hmm. That'd be mm -hmm. fun. That could come in handy for future events. You never and know. Gave them a bag. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what's in that bag that they never opened? Yeah. There might be mm -hmm. something useful in there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Handy later. My note that I have in this scene is the crate is right there. Either they are all the mole or they all suck. Uh... <laughs> So that's how I feel about the underwater team. Uh, and then meanwhile, down low, Rob, you and me, we're just walking around right. for an hour. Well, I think that this is the most interesting group to talk about because uh, are they inept or is the mole in this group? Because they didn't even get close to where they were. I thought it was fun in the travel by map yes. of that, how they like start in the right direction and then veer like way left in the opposite direction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They show us that they're just like completely far from the target and the clock is ticking down and they just are not even remotely close. Said they don't even open their backpack. They don't, they don't even know that they're in the clue. The bag. They're like, what clue? Mm -hmm. Not that mm -hmm. the clue would have helped them, it seems like, if they're nowhere near their, their crate, their yeah. case. But uh, yeah. Who has the line? I have this jotted down. Someone on the down low crew just says, the math is not mathing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Relatable. I think it was Osei who yeah. said that. The math uh, is, good lines. is not mathing. Yeah. It, it's a testament to the good editing and the good casting of Osei that we already know what things are Osei-ish things to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But, Osei, can you math? No. Is it possible that Joy could have, as a as a pilot, screwed up the map that bad? Yeah, I mean, I mean she, like when you're she did. My but she did. Is she the mole? The is she the mole? I mean, she's on the ground. She's used to navigating in the air. Yeah, and I guess so. Maps that are pilot different. is definitely on the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> think that when you're flying a plane, and someone can correct me, the pilots out there. I don't think like you're holding up a crusty map and you're looking at it and then you look up and then like you wheel your plane through the sky. Like, I don't think you map that way. You have like all sorts of like funky little electronic doohickeys. Yeah. The map's not but mapping. 
But she's uh-huh. the one who said she's a good navigator. Nobody said, oh, you're a pilot, so you must know how to read this map to get us where we're going. Yeah. She is the one who put herself forward as being able to do it. Yeah. If Joy is the mole, Rob, I, I posit that she is a bad mole. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. a pilot. She's screwing up the map thing. That's like sus to the point of being like, that's, you know, that's not, we're not bouncing back from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, like everyone will just look at her as the mole moving forward for the rest of this. Yeah. I, and I think she's probably just, we're going to hit next and she's gone. Would be my guess. Yeah. Um, and she also is the person that is like pushing the hardest for that. Will is the mole. So, mm-hmm. yes. so uh, that I think that if she is safe, um, I, I feel like maybe she's onto something and if she's gone, I feel like will is not the mole. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so everyone converges back at the plane. They put the, the the two briefcases that they did get in the plane for overnight. Um, they're going to have to uh, set up camp for the night. Uh, Captain Dom is going to be leading uh, the camp into setting up for the evening. Uh, what does he say? He said, I'm Dom Cruise. I'm doing every mission impossible. Mm-hmm. I love him. I think uh-huh. he's great. He's doing his little rap in like his first confessional. He's extremely charismatic, which I think makes him extremely dangerous. Uh, he'd be a great mole because I love him. Mm-hmm. Um at one point, uh, Osei is like going into the jungle to look for something. And, and Greg says, you really going into the jungle? And Osei says, you really talking from the plane? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. I like that Because the Because well. the cargo has gone missing and Osei is trying to go find it. Yeah. Uh, in the night, they're talking about biggest fears. There's some yeah. bonding that's going on. Greg's biggest fear uh, uh, is owls. Yes, this is a big week for this on reality TV because on, 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 on the no on the real love boat, um, a woman was asked the same question. And if you think owls is is a wild answer, um, there was a woman on the real love boat who said that her biggest fear is ants. Ooh, like mm. uh, like your relatives or no explanation. Scene scene change right after. Oh, okay. At ants. least here we got the backstory of why the mm. owls is the biggest fear. Yeah, because just their eyes and their heads, they turn. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I get it. I'm not sure. I, I, I've i been around owls. They're not that scary up close. But yeah. conceptually, I can see where that could be a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, my biggest the show fear, that asks, who, who? My who? biggest fear is having to tell you what my biggest fear is on a podcast. Mm. So I won't ask the question for the group. Um, everybody goes to sleep. I believe that William and Dom say, good night. I love you. In the night, if I'm not mistaken, I believe yep. it's the two of them. Uh, so yep. a swift friendship is is growing. Uh, sleep tight. Don't let the forest bugs bite. Uh, and when they wake up in the morning, uh, no one got a good night of sleep. One of the briefcases is, go- is gone. Uh, and now everybody's like, "This the, the mole did this. The mole took a briefcase from us. Uh, and it's Will who's going on being like, all right, well, this is what we got to do. We got to survey the land. You go this way. I'll go that yeah. way. Why did he have to be like this? <laughs> He's trying to get everybody off the scent, I He's guess. He's like, let's of all go look over here where I didn't hide it. He mm-hmm. already got away with it. Why Why? Why was he being uh, Well, if they recover way? it, if they recover it, then uh... I think everything is back to, is not only reset, my understanding is now the briefcase is worthless. I think it zeroes out. So it behooves him, assuming he's not the mole, uh, mm-hmm. it behooves him to like completely snow the crew. Uh, and it seems like it works. Uh, though Joy is like, I don't know about this Will guy. You know, uh, I've seen the Avengers movies and Thor is a little smarter than he looks. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, they're not they're not sure about about him. Uh, yeah. Greg is just eating a banana as he's sitting in the plane watching everybody run around. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Osei says, this is serious business. We're broke, bro. We're broke. Because they took the. It was the more expensive case that got taken, yes. too. Mm-hmm. And they do have those specific values. So the yes. $5,000 case is the one that's gone missing. Yes. Uh, so that's gone. Uh, and they do not recover it in time uh, to get to the chopper and get out of the jungle. And it is while in the helicopter, uh, Jess, that Osei tells us that my butt cheeks are like this because <laughs> I haven't used a bathroom in three days. I feel like that's not the place to reveal that. Mm-hmm. 
three well, days. To be fair, he didn't reveal it on the helicopter. No. He revealed it to us in confession. Yeah, but he about did re- his time on the helicopter. He did reveal it to us on the show. Uh, yes. And I don't. Know I don't that think there's ever a good that. time that we need no, that it's, revealed. We don't need to know. Didn't need to know it. Unless say I just met you, man. You know. Unless he's getting medevaced for that reason. Oh. oh. Revenge of the Saturday sticks, Rob. <laughs> We're loading back up Joe Del Campo style on those beef sticks, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, why three days? They've just been in the jungle for one. I don't. <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> the I, math I, I, ain't I, mathin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I thought it was like more like a nerves issue. Like, uh, is it is, is that he did he have to go and then there they just was not a facility around. Mm. Maybe. They must. It's inhumane to cast somebody on a show and put them into isolation and then not let them use the bathroom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's like stuff they do on The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or but it was like uh, this. It was Flavor of Love where they did that. Oh. Uh, oh boy. That sounds about right. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, gross, but love it. Uh, then they get helicoptered to uh, the Avengers campus at Disney World. <laughs> Uh, where they shall be staying for the duration, or do we think Rob, this is just like an Airbnb that they've rented? No, I I, th- I think that they're gonna stay here. I, like I feel like on the, the original mall, they they like traveled all yeah. around Europe, right? No, I think this is gonna be the home base, and I think COVID they're gonna show. go off into COVID show. Yeah, yeah, COVID show be COVID showing. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna keep them in one spot. We're gonna have them here in this like sort of. I mean, in fairness, Jess, it is sort of got like big uh, Bond villain layer energy. So that at least is uh, like spy show adjacent. That checks out. Yeah. But I, mm-hmm. I'm gonna miss the sort of like you know quaintly cobbled streets of Europe. Mm-hmm. Of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want this to become like uh, like BG is to Survivor. I don't want the mole to only go to this particular house, to the Daintree rainforest every year. Uh, take me around the world, please. Unless they like, brand the house. Unless it is like, unless it becomes like Alex Wagner's fun house. Yeah, and they like, are. Welcome to the mole's house. Yeah. Mm. Welcome to. Mole the, mansion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the mole, mole manor. Mole. Mm hmm. Yeah. If they, yeah, if they uh. really, yeah. Mole. Speaking of having not used the bathroom in three oh, days, no. Yikes, oh, no. no, no, no. So if we're they... gonna see footage of Will <laughs> taking the case. Okay, taking the case. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they roll up and Alex Wagner says, "Yeah, we've got footage." And at first I'm like, "Okay, so what are they gonna reveal here? Did anyone ha- was was anyone thinking that they were just gonna dox somebody here at this point?" They were, I was I was hoping it would be like a cartoon mole. Uh-huh. Oh. They just like animate over the top of it like a whammy. <laughs> yeah. See, I thought they were gonna like show the footage, but they were gonna like blur the person who it was. It'd be like yeah. have to like be pixelated. Like, see, look, this is what happened. Look, uh, they got away with it right in front of your face. Does that make you mad? There could have been some great Netflix synergy. They could have had someone in like Squid Game attire. Oh, uh, right. Mm. I thought you were gonna bring up the Pantavrit. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, which version of Mike Myers uh, shows up across? Because the, the Netflix censoring uh, yeah. <laughs> filters are are a little bit on the fritz. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it's Will. It's Will. He's taking the case. And Zed, I had a thought that maybe the twist was going to be like they were going to be like, yeah, Will works for us. And you all just failed the test because one of you is the mole and you couldn't ferret out one of our own right away. And that that would have been like an you early. You ferret the like, mole? Yeah. You're supposed to ferret the mole. It's sort of like that's what you do. Rock, paper, scissors, ferret, mole, skunk. You're supposed to act kind of squirrely groundhog. while you do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ferret, mole, oh, groundhog. Goodness. Yes. Ferret covers mole. Mole mm-hmm. covers groundhog. Groundhog covers ferret. Uh, uh, so I thought it was maybe going to be something like that, but then Will's just Will looks at Dom, who's heartbroken. Tony Stark and and <laughs> Thor are, are on the outs so early, and Will looks at times like, "Have I ever let you down before, bro?" Dom's mm-hmm. like, "No, no." We're like, "You guys just met each other." Mm-hmm. I love them, I, coconut bandits all the way. Mm-hmm. I want them to stay together forever. Run this thing to the end. Let's go because yeah, then he's like, "I feel yeah. I could believe in you." Yeah. Uh, it's all much ado about nothing, right? We were all suspicious on the show for 10 minutes, all for the show to be like, no, 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 we gave him this side task. It was all on the up and up. It's fine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, so, no, it's that he had to steal one of the cases without anybody noticed, noticing, and he would double the prize. He completed the challenge. Now they have doubled the value of that $5,000 case. $12,500 goes into the prize pot. We're swimming in money. Yeah. And the men are thrilled and the women are suspicious. Yes. Like across the board, it seems to be divided along those gender lines. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so that's where we land with all of that. Uh, now, Jessica Lee, I believe you need to take a chopper out of the Avengers compound at this moment in time before we finish recapping the episode. You have parting thoughts after one episode, suspicions that you want to cast, mole predictions that you want to make. I mean, I'll throw my my mole prediction after episode one, and I'm watch me be completely wrong immediately. Mm -hmm. But I think Joy looks suspicious. I think yeah. Osei looks suspicious because I don't. O Osei is kind of. I want to. I want to put this charitably, but he's kind of dumb, mm. and I feel like maybe maybe dumb is a good act to put on if you are the mole. Mm -hmm. he's out of his element and I, and yes. could be leaning yeah. into that. Yeah. I, uh, you know, have the same thoughts about joy. I, I, I've definitely like, um, been percolating about not, not in the same way. Osei is, um, mm -hmm. but I almost thought that Osei like, uh, was so, was so bad in the first challenge that I almost feel like it, it, he, by process of it, I, I kind of think he's not the mole because I okay. feel like the, even the mole would not have been so bold as to, uh, like, uh, be, that bad in the first challenge yeah um now we're getting into like vizini switching the yes drinks. Mm -hmm. yes we are yeah. we are, that is that's is what this show is isn't it yeah pretty yeah. much yeah never mess with an osalian when death is on the line mm -hmm. uh yeah i don't know um i think that that's interesting osay is the mole, mole say mm -hmm. <laughs> it's there yeah. uh who do you think when we hit next episode jess is gone it's either Osei or Joy. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, yeah, yeah William's a candidate. To. Isn't William still in William the mix? William is still in yeah. the mix. Yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, I guess that's got some some real Kate vibes. If he like does a thing that's heroic for the whole team, and uh -huh. then he gets kicked off yeah. immediately. Yeah. Who was Osei gunning for in the quiz? Oh wow. Okay, so we're like tr trying to like uh, like yeah. If he goes home, yeah. yeah. Uh, First of all, it would be a big blow to the show because he's yes. great. Mm. Yes. I think everybody on the down low team was suspicious of Joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, all right, Jess, red screen for Jess. Jess, uh, uh, you have you have more more TV to recap yep. and discuss elsewhere. Your podcast shall be found right here on this very network. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to give quick plugs for what you got going on? Uh, well, I'm about to jump off here and go talk to the winners of Amazing Race Canada. So we'll have that in the Reality TV Rehap Ups feed. And then I'm going to leave it to you, Josh, to recap the thing that we recap. And yes. you, Rob, can talk about the other thing we recap. We got it. it. We got okay. it. All right. All right. At Haymaker Hattie, wherever you can find her. Jess, Godspeed. we'll be back with you on Monday night. Bye. Bye. Okay. The rest of us are sticking around. We've got more mole to continue talking about. But not a ton more episode, right? The prize pot's now at $12,500. Dom respects Will's big move. Uh, are you surprised, Zed, at how quickly Dom recovers from this? And it's like, yeah, Will's a good guy. That was no, really he smart. needs he needs this. He needs his uh -huh. bromance. Mm -hmm. He's already, uh, he thought, I think he was trying to create that with Osei, and then that was not <sighs> going to fly. And he's like, all right, I got to have my one guy, my ride or die, and it's yeah. going to be Will. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know you two are both more acquainted with the MCU than I am, mm -hmm. but Dom says to Will, okay, so uh, you you know, you're Thor. And I and I'm Iron Man, right? But I kind of feel like that uh, he was calling himself the Captain before. Shouldn't he be Captain America? Is he giving yeah. off Iron Man vibes to you? Uh, I feel like if he's trying to be like super buds with Thor, uh, like you know, Tony Stark and Thor weren't like overly tight. I feel like mm -hmm. I don't even think Captain America and Thor were overly tight. They shared a hammer, you mm -hmm. know. They had mutual uh, acquaintance. With a hammer, I Don feel like... is too cool to be Captain America, though. It, with all uh... respect. oh come on, Steve Rogers, that's America's ass you're talking about right now. Sorry, maybe that should be reserved for Osei. 
so we could have that uh, on on uh, reservation. Uh, I think uh, Zed, the, the Thor Ragnarok vibes. Dom's got to be Hulk, right? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Uh, Dom is strongest mole patroller. Yeah. I think <laughs> my that's my favorite buddy be. cop film, mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, it's a great one. <laughs> Um, okay, we do get a little more from Samara here where she has a confessional where she says, I think that Will wants to look like the good guy so that he could throw us all off that he is actually the bad guy. And this confirms to me that he's the mole. Uh, and this is what we are hearing on the other side of in the sleepover scene earlier in the episode, Rob, that Samara tells us, well, I'm a clinical psych major, so I know people. Uh, so Samara, after one episode, is ready to call it. Will is the mole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that he is. Okay. Um, I, I think I think that uh, if you went in going all in, and, and again, you two know the strategy better. But I think that you know, are you better like to just do sort of like scatter shot in the first couple of rounds as opposed to like go all in? Okay, this is my pick of what I think is going to, to be the mole. I would say probably yeah, right, Zed. Yeah, I don't think you want to have too much presence too early. You don't want people paying too much attention to you yeah. for good or bad reasons mm-hmm. when there's a, a sea of people to get lost in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's way too soon. There's so many people. There's what? There's 12 competitors here, right? Like, Correct. You know, that is, that's not a good time to, to, to put it all in on, on one person, I think. Um, so either either Will is the mole or Samara did spread out the wealth uh, a tiny, tiny bit, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one hour until quiz time and everyone's starting to get nervous and everyone's like, I don't know how the quiz is going to be. I guess it's like going to be like a statistics thing. I don't know. I think maybe we're just going to get lucky. And I'm over here just trying to figure out what kind of food they have on the table. Uh, that <laughs> what was it? Eating at. Couldn't see. Yeah. A lot of booze. A lot of uh, champagne and Alex Wagner. Tiny bubbles, yeah. She's got the martini, tiny bubbles. Um, I could I could detect no food. Uh, so there's a thing I like to do uh, is see the lavish spreads that they have in the seasons of the mole. Um, so I don't know what they're eating out there yet. I hope that they're eating good. I hope mm-hmm. that they've got good food. There was a banana earlier in the episode. Yes, yes. I was paying more attention to what they were eating on the campsite where mm-hmm. it did seem like that. Was it Greg? That was uh, Greg. I thought he also had like some avocado toast. It looked like at one point. <laughs> Whoa. Like, yeah, okay, now, now we're thing. talking yeah. about the mole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Avocado uh, toast is where it's at for the mole. Like that's what they should be eating. And they should have like, uh, I don't know, Zed, like edible gold flakes on, the, on that toast oh as well. God. This is very lush. Taken out of the pot? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Little did you know when you chose to eat this avocado toast. <laughs> you also ate $500 of your <laughs> pot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so they're all drinking and they're all trying to figure out what's going on. We see a little bit of the quiz. I didn't jot a lot of it down. The questions that I got is, um, I got, is the mole currently married? What color shoes is the mole wearing? What color are the mole's eyes? Zed, it's been what uh, twenty some odd years since the mole premiered on uh, on what was it, ABC? ABC. ABC ABC back in the day, um, and still in all of that time, we've yet to figure out how to make the elimination process compelling at all. Uh, like the mechanism for it, the quiz is just totally whatever for me still yeah it's tough because there's inevitably questions that we as viewers cannot possibly answer when watching (laughs) an Mm hour-long tv program yeah um they would have to show us everybody's shoes not that interesting we would have to be paying you know who was sitting next to who at this moment in time that we probably didn't even see uh so even if they were to give us all of the quiz questions so that we could play along we would have no way of answering yeah. many of them rob Can is there is there a better mechanism do we want to workshop this do we want to yes and the quiz i don't know i you know i always felt like that this was like um you know uh, not a great part of the show my, my question is i i don't remember how they did the eliminations here like i know certainly it was not a phone a smartphone uh that sure was, you want a reminder 
Yeah. yeah. They yeah. Would, How did they, they do would, it? They would have everybody get like freshly showered and yes. put on their Sunday finest. And mm-hmm. they would all sit in like uh, in like, you know, wooden chairs in front of a gigantic TV with like a built in VHS that would be yeah. trotted out in front of your like high school biology. And it was like class. a fingerprint, right? With their yes. name. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you so you see like, like the cables running, mm-hmm. like 800 cables yes. running off. Yes. Anderson Cooper has a laptop that probably weighs 10 pounds yes. in front of him where he yes. could certainly murder a like couple of people with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before it broke. Uh, and Darwin. yeah, he would type the names. Yeah. He would also do it in no particular order. And then the TV would go red if the person was was gone. Um, so we've smartphoned it up, smartphoned it up. Uh, so uh, green screen, you're safe. Is that, red is that screen, Boston Rob? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> It's almost something like that. I don't know what because he says smarten up. Yeah, I, I yes. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what you got, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think the smartphones are adding anything to it. If you're going to type it into the computer anyway, just give us the screen. It's yeah. okay to have things that are like the old show. I think the shift from it's like, not like spy... we evolved away from televisions. <laughs> no. <laughs> We still have giant screens. We could just mm-hmm. do it wirelessly. They also were like, okay, unfortunately, there will be no time for goodbyes. Once you're eliminated, <laughs> yeah. you're eliminated. Like, yeah. is there a trap door? How are they going to make this work? <laughs> yeah. Get up and get out. Well, this is exciting because we don't know the answer to this. We are we are left with three possible candidates to be taken out of the game. Uh, we have Joy is in contention. Yeah, uh, I believe Ose is up there as well, and, and William Will. too. This is terrible. Yeah. Three of our biggest stars Three of the show. Yeah. We're, we're we're losing a big one. Like it. I'm not happy about the three that we have to choose from. I'm loving living in this brief moment in time where ignorance is bliss and we don't know. I hope that there is some sort of like double blind on the other side of the next button where it's like, just kidding. None of you are going home. You're all safe. You all did mm. equally poorly on it's the a quiz. Non elimination leg. <laughs> yes, a mega leg. Yeah. Mm. Um, I will say, I think Will is going to be safe uh, only because that Will does not have to deal with any of the drama of is Will the mole or not? Like, so I think just by that nature of like, he is going to be on a curve where he did not have to like figure out any, devote any mental energy to figuring out the business with Will. Mm. That's a good point. That's That's interesting. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I was kind of surprised that he didn't get an exemption. Uh, they they have exemptions sometimes that you can win to get you exempt from the quiz. And I would have thought that like maybe that first thing that he did uh, with stealing the briefcase would have been an exemption task, but I guess not. Yeah. Um, so who knows? It's one of them. And yeah, I am really interested. They're all sitting around the table. Rob, do you think it'll be like Dr. Evil's layer where one of their chairs will fall back and they'll go and <laughs> fall down? It's like the pit mm-hmm. of fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. with, with I'm, Mustafa. I'm, I'm bad, badly burned. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You uh, shot me. So. Yeah, it like, shot kind of, me right it, in the arm. That it does you... look like a Dr. Evil's type of house. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Alex Wagner, Robert Wagner, we're pretty close. <laughs> Who's number two? Who does number two work? <laughs> Not <for>? Osei. Not Osei. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. So uh, we'll see, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can we get, all right, the, uh, we should lock in our mole yes. predictions. Yes. Okay. A lot of pressure on me. Uh, well, I guess maybe the pressure is off now because uh, I, I'd gotten my mole prediction right yeah. in season one very early. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, season two, I broke that. So that's fine. I'm I'm, I'm feeling mm-hmm. okay here. I uh, did not say this while Jess was around, but Zed, very exciting for me to know as much about a season of yeah. mole as you do. This is exciting. Exciting we are times. all on the same page, the same side of the table here. The the tables have not so much turned as become uneven. Okay. Um, so who do we think is the mole? I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be like the Tina Wesson, the dog that did not bark deal. Uh, and we heard nothing from Sandy in this episode. Hmm. Sandy is the mole. That's my prediction. Interesting. Sandy is the mole. Okay. Uh, locking it in. Sandy, you are the mole. It is very suspicious to say absolutely nothing on my reality TV screen. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. You're the mole. 
That's a good one. Okay. Uh, Zed, who do you have? I'm going Greg. Okay. Uh, particularly because when they were in the river looking for the crate, he was like, I really want to make sure that it's not in this area. And they have this huge section of river to check. And he's committed to this like small little quadrant. He's like, we got to take our time. It took us half an hour to get here, but we got to take our time. We got to open the clue. Uh, Greg is my pick. Okay. okay. Rob, who do you got? Oh, boy, um, so many good ones. I really felt like it could be Joy, but talking it through, I think that Joy is going to be eliminated when we come, when we come I back. I do, I do. Um, and so it's going to be sad to see her go. But I, I think I'm probably a little bit more like coming down on Josh's side of things. I, th I think that the mole that they're not going to beat us over the head with who the mole is uh, in, in the first episode. But I think that they're going to it's going to be somebody who had something like I don't I don't think they're going to totally not show us. So I'm going to go with somebody that was uh, maybe one of the more subtle edits in the episode. And I'm going to just say that it is uh, Cassie. OK. Yeah, who I believe is the very first person that we mm -hmm. see. She's our first character we're she introduced gets, to. She gets second. She, uh, the Casey is first. Got it. Okay. Oh, I was going to say Cassie oh, or Cassie. You have Cassie or Casey. Yeah, Ka yes. yeah I'm sorry. That, uh, yes. that K, K E S I. Got it. Okay, Cassie. Because I was going to say, actually, I think Casey is an interesting pick. Uh, first person. That is you interesting. Meet. That that's interesting also. Uh, can I change my answer? Can I go Casey? I'm going to switch. Well, when you said li li like Tina Weston, I thought you were going to say, okay, I think it's going to be the nurse. Yeah. Well, mm. I think I'm going to switch. I'm going to go Casey. I'm, I'm switching to Casey. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing the Monty Hall problem wrong, according yeah. to Christian, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going with she Casey. Is the, she's the second oldest member of the cast at 39. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she is a COVID nurse, mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder if they're going to be like, yeah, this person who you think is a superhero in today's day and age, she's the mole. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think Casey, not a bad pick. Uh, she's so to being under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. exactly. If she could be a COVID nurse, she could absolutely handle the stress of being a mole. No right. doubt. For sure. Right. And. I feel like that. Okay, this is our, just our, our like you know first episode predictions. But I yeah. feel like at the end of this week, after we get through these, that that's our real prediction sure. at the end of week yes. one. Yeah. Because then we've really gotten to know these people. Correct. Yes. Right now we're just saying hi. This is for fun. Yeah. 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 It's it's challenging fun. without even knowing who the first person who's gone yeah. home is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're really d taking shots in the dark here. Yes. To, mm -hmm. uh, borrow from yes. another show. Yes. We're we're scraping around to see who we've got. So uh, I think talking it through, I thought this was fun. Like, you know, there's things about the mole that I that I yeah. just, you know, in any iteration, I think I'll probably enjoy. Uh, like the format of the show is yeah. great. I do kind of feel like they got like 90 percent of the way towards like an incredibly elite reality TV format. And then they're like, OK, but how do we eliminate people? Uh, I don't know. Quiz. So, like, <laughs> you know, that that I wish they could still figure out how to make that compelling for TV. But I think. I miss Anderson Cooper. I think Alex Wagner's going to grow on me. I think that she was fun in this episode. And I do think the cast, uh, as we've talked them through, Rob, uh, a lot of uh, yeah. entertaining material to discuss for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear you say that. I felt I got I was feeling like in the beginning, uh, maybe you weren't feeling it so much. Uh, the as moment. often happens, yeah. I talk through an episode and in the talking through of the episode, I'm like, hey, you know what? I think I'm charged up for this. this but is good. I, I had so much fun. I, I couldn't wait to come on here. I, I mean, I just I watched it, you know, just a little bit before uh, we did the podcast. But I, I'm really happy to be included on this journey. I think this is going to be really fun to go through and yeah, I can't wait to see what the next couple of weeks going to be like. Zed, are you enjoying this? Are you, are you eager to hit next? Yeah, I'm happy to find out what happens. I like this group of people. I think they're interesting and I think the relationships they're going to create are entertaining. And either way I get to hang out with like the elites of podcasting with this crew of folks that we've gotten together to talk about the show. So I cannot wait to to keep going. Fun the, the Avengers of podcast. Yeah, the Avengers We're here. of podcast. We're doing yeah. it. Yes. <laughs> so musical today. Have you met me? Um, yes. All right. Well, that's the Mole Patrol uh, week one in the books. We are going to be coming back recording on Monday night, uh, Monday, October 10th. We will recap the first week of the Mole. So we will watch everything that Netflix has dropped at this point and recap it all. And we will do that every Monday night until we are done talking through the Mole season 
one. So that'll do it for this first episode. We'll do some additional plugs. Uh, Rob, what do you got going on? Lots of Survivor, lots yeah, of reality look, TV. So much, go- so much going on. I've I podcast about all three of the shows on uh, CBS Reality Wednesday, Survivor, The Real Love Boat, and The Amazing Race. So mm-hmm. you can check that out with uh, Jessica Lee, Mike Bloom, and myself. Uh, we had our recap of uh, part one of the Mega Leg uh this week so uh really just a ton of great reality tv with the mole back also i mean what a fun october yeah it's very very good Mm -hmm. um what did you have going on with jess that jess was going to say that you could play the amazing race the amazing race yes and then and then with josh wiggler i get to talk about game of thrones uh, every week yes uh the house of the dragon Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a lot of House of the Dragon content for you, including uh, the midweek uh, Rob and Josh joint, which uh, has been uh, really, really fun. Uh, midweek, but never mid. Never mid. And uh, never weak. And never weak. Uh, strong is a loaded word uh, mm-hmm. when we're talking <laughs> about House of the Dragon. But I mm-hmm. uh, do, dare I say, uh, Brooklyn Z at Hard Rock Hope, wherever you can find them, including twitch.tv slash Hard Rock Hope. Give your plugs. Or did I just yeah, do it? I- I've been living in Midgar. Yes. Uh, oh. Talking about Final Fantasy VII. Uh, not with Josh, because he's very busy, but with our buddy Adam H. from the Post Show Recaps patron Discord is how we became friends. Uh, we just wrapped up Final Fantasy VII. We will be coming to you with more content in that feed, and eventually Josh and I are going to cover Final Fantasy IX. One of these days. One of these days. Uh, but you can find me over there in the Final Fantasy feed, showing up on random Post Show Recaps podcasts. I was on the Versus pod with Josh and Latanya last week talking Game of Thrones uh, and twitch.tv slash Hard Rock Hope. That's where you can find me doing my thing most days of the week. Amazing. I'm at Round Howard, wherever you can find me, mostly retweeting on Twitter these days. Thrilled to be in your RHAP feed with some reality TV coverage, though rumors of uh, me being banned from the feed uh, notwithstanding. That one person that was is really going to be... That was yeah, the survivor feed. That one yeah. person is going to be mad. Mm-hmm. You always talk to... Yeah, that's gonna. that one person is going to be mad. I hope the rest of you are happy to have the Mole Patrol back in your life. Uh, We will be in your life for the next few weeks as we are taking down all of season one of Netflix's The Mole. Off to a great start. Really excited to hit next, which is exactly what we are going to do. Until next time, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, I got to hit that. Hey, you have to say bye. (laughs) Bye.